Now in the next section, we will talk about the clinical features of the glomus tumor. In this, we will talk about the intratympanic tumor and polyp presentation, cranial nerve palsies, and audible view. The clinical features, intratympanic tumor, um, the symptoms of intratympanic tumor is uh, cysts is present in the middle ear cavity and uh, it is a growth mass present so it can cause conductive hearing loss and this conductive hearing loss it progress slowly and uh, lead to uh, hearing loss which is conductive in nature because of the presence of the tumor in the middle ear and from the uh, tympanic branch of the uh, ninth cranial nerve. So it's intra-tympanic in the tympanic cavity. Tinnitus, in this case, the tinnitus is pulsatile and swishing character. So tinnitus is present, which is pulsatile in nature and very disturbing to the affected individual. This is the diagram that shows the uh, glomus tumor through the otoscopy. Otoscopy results, there is rising sun appearance, rising sun appearance, and there is pulsation sign, brown sign is positive in this case. So clinical feature of intratympanic glomus tumor, it can cause conductive hearing loss, tinnitus, which is pulsatile in nature, swishing character. There is on autoscopy, there is rising sun appearance. Pulsation sign is present. There is pulsation when the uh, air is uh, pushed in, then it produced the pulsation and that's the pulsation sign which is present in this case. Tumor which is present as a polyp. If you see this is the uh, tumor that is a polyp in shape. Polyps are the growths which are present as uh, from the uh, which grow from the stalk. So they are attached with the help of the stalk. This is the stalk and this is the polyp which is attached with the stalk. Symptoms of a tumor that is present as a polyp, present as polyp is profuse bleeding from the ear. Polyps, they can bleed easily, they are hanging tumors, so they bleed easily. Profuse bleeding from the ear is present. There is dizziness vertigo and facial paralysis is present in this tumor which present as a polyp. Autoria, autoria is the flow of fluid from the uh, ear. Rhea is flow, auto is for the ear. The examination reveals there is red vascular polyp filling the meatus. So on the examination, you will see a polyp hanging from the ear because it perforates the tympanic membrane eardrum and comes out, hangs out of the ear because it has a stalk that, which attaches this tumor to the ear. Bleeds readily and profusely on manipulation or at biopsy. It's very vascular. So when biopsy is performed, when it is touched or manipulated, these polyps can, polyp tumors can bleed easily. Cranial nerve palsies appear several years after the oral symptoms. So as a result of the tumor, the facial paralysis is not very uh, occurs rapidly or fast. It appears several years after the oral or ear symptoms. Ninth uh, to twelfth cranial nerves paralyzed. 
Dysphagia and hoarseness is present. Dysphagia is difficulty in swallowing and hoarseness of the voice is present. Unilateral paralysis of soft palate, pharynx and vocal cord is present. Vocal cord paralysis leads to hoarseness and then there is paralysis of soft palate and pharynx that can lead to dysphagia and difficulty in swallowing. Weakness of the trapezius and sternocleidomastoid muscles is present, which is usually due to involvement of cranial nerve 11th. Atrophy of higher half of the tongue is present because of the involvement of the 12th cranial nerve. So all these uh, uh, signs are mainly due to the involvement of the cranial nerves from 9th to 12th that can lead to dysphagia, that can lead to hoarseness of the voice, difficult paralysis of the sternocleidomastoid and trapezius muscle in the neck and um, there is atrophy of the tongue. Audible view, auscultation with stethoscope over the mastoid or mastoid may reveal systolic brew or the sound which is auscultated with the help of the um, uh, stethoscope is systolic brew from, during the contraction phase there is systole because of the pushing of the blood because of the vascular nature of this tumor. Glomus tumor secrete catecholamines. Catecholamines are epinephrine, uh, norepinephrines. These are the um, uh, neurotransmitters that can cause increased stimulation of the vascular system and cause bruising. Bru Headache is present, sweating, palpitation, hypertension, and anxiety. Because of production of catecholamines, epinephrine, norepinephrine, which all can cause hyperstimulation, and this can cause headache, sweating, hypertension, and anxiety. Uh, require further investigations in which different tests are performed for the levels of uh, 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 catecholamines. Rule of tens, 10% 10 tumors are familial in nature, 10%. They are multicentric and functional. So 10% rule of 10 is applied to glomus tumor in which 10% are familial, multicentric, and 10% are functional in nature. So that was all about this section. Thank you for watching scardia.com.